this time we are pleased to be able to have Sister Shannon and Brother Wyatt come and sing for us. Sing for the Lord. Amen. That's nice, isn't it? To uh, have uh, young ones that are willing to come up and begin uh, serving the Lord. And, and I know that's hard. It can be hard to come up and, and sing. But uh, what a blessing it is to the Lord and a blessing to, uh, to each one of us. Um, I had to sing kind of right along with. Did anybody else have to sing as they were singing? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Did a good job. We, we thank you for it. Um, forgot to, to thank uh, Sandy too. I think she was doing a little bit of the uh, uh, decorating and stuff around, around here um, with the tree and some of the things in the windows and stuff. So um, praise the Lord for that. We thank, thank her for that. And I don't know if Brother Kurt, were you over here helping too? Did you do any? No, nope. he's <laughs> not. Moral support. <laughs> Looks nice though, starting to look uh, Christmassy and stuff. So. We thank the Lord uh, uh, for that as well. Um, all the music, thankful for it and preparing our hearts for uh, Christmas time, the Christmas songs that we were singing and uh, praise the Lord. Um, well, let's, let's open our Bible to uh, a little different place than uh, Joshua this morning, although I'm going to mention a few things from... from uh, that message. Who missed last week? Jancy was gone. Jenny was gone. So if you missed last week, we, we were looking at the old corn. The old corn that uh, Israel ended up going into the promised land. They spent that time on the hill of four skins, we know, after they crossed that Jordan River, uh, there was some evidence of things that had happened in their life that they saw. They worshipped, they uh, celebrated the Passover, and then they partook of the old corn, the corn that was in the land, the fruit of the land. The old corn and the fruit of the land, the old corn, corn a lot of times is 
reference to the grain, the different grains and stuff that they had available to them. But God had promised that when they entered into the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey, that this was already going to be provided for them. The fruits of the land. Not only the fruit, but the houses, the things that were in the houses. They had to just come in and occupy it. That old corn was there for them. And then we kind of looked at it just a little bit and uh, were reminded that that only lasted a year, that old corn. And then the next year after that, they were going to have to go out and till the ground and plant the seed and they were going to have to begin to work the land and then it was going to produce abundantly for them if they did what the Lord wanted them to do and they were obedient and we know as we follow the scripture through that Israel followed after false gods and was not obedient to the Lord so they didn't enter into all that God has promised them yet but that is a promise that's still yet future for them to have all that God has promised them but we also reflected on how does that passage apply to us as Christians today? Well, as we've looked at coming out of Egypt, the world, crossing the Red Sea redemption, going through the wilderness, wandering, and then to that Jordan River where we have to say to ourselves, I'm going to die to myself and live to Jesus and spend time on the hill of foreskins cutting away the remainder of those besetting sins in our life. And that's where we really truly begin to live for the Lord and we enter into that land, the land flowing with milk and honey. And for us as Christians, when we come to that point, we looked at in our evening service last week, or afternoon it would have been, the leaven fruits of the Spirit. See, it's the same for us. The old corn for Israel was what the 11 fruits of the Spirit are for us. They're already there when we come to know the Lord and we can have them in our life. All we have to do is take them. But oftentimes, we don't take either what God has for us. Well, as I was doing my study this week, kind of I'm reading through Matthew, and I got to chapter 5 in verse 13, and God gave me another piece that I hadn't seen before. And that piece is what I want to share with us this morning that really has to do with many things that we've been looking at over this last year, but a piece I think that I was missing a little bit to be able to put a couple things together that was good for me. And these are the things that were put together. Well, I labeled this message, The Salt Between. And if you've got your, uh, a bulletin with you, I know those that are, are out there not uh, um, with us that are live streaming, we do have a bulletin on our web page. But on the inside, you'll see a couple elements from the periodic table, if you notice that in there. I know uh, Shelly is a chemistry person, so I had to ask her a couple questions about that periodic table to refresh my mind, because I'm not a, a real good uh, chemistry person like, like she was, but as I came to this passage, I began to see the salt between, and the salt between the fruit of the Spirit and the 13 things that we've learned about the gold, silver, and precious stones work that are in our note-taking book. If you have it, those 13 works that we're to be doing for the Lord. See, we went over that several months ago, several months ago. And just last week, we looked at those 11 fruits of the Spirit. So as I began to look at it, I read verse 13 here, and I'm going to read it to you. 
of Matthew 5, it says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. So the salt between. Well, what is the salt between? Well, to know what the salt between is, I think we've got to understand a little bit about salt first. So now it's time for our science lesson. We'll see who knows. I think everybody probably already knows this. It's pretty elementary with the salt. I want you, in order for us to get salt, it takes two elements together. And it takes chlorine. And what else does it take? Anybody know what the other one is besides chlorine? What'd you say, Lee? Sodium. Sodium and chlorine together make salt. Now I want you to think of this. They're chemically united. Who knows? Who knows what chlorine is? Is chlorine a gas or a solid? What is it? A gas. Would everybody agree? Shelley, is it a gas? Right. Chlorine, the chlorine compound there is a gas. And the sodium, is it a gas or is it a solid? What do you say, Jancy, what would you say? <laughs> I have no clue. What did you say, Taryn? He says a solid. Shelly, is it a solid? Yeah. Sodium is a solid, more of a metal. So these two combine together, and we get salt. But if we have chlorine gas alone, chlorine gas alone is a deadly poison. So think of that. Chlorine gas alone would be a deadly poison all alone. And then if we look at metal sodium all alone, it would be destitute of the saving quality of salt by itself if it wasn't mixed with the chlorine. But as we add these two together, the element... The two elements form a substance with a new quality that we call salt. So I came up with the title, the salt between, it's there between, when they come together, the salt, those two compounds make salt. Now oftentimes in biblical times, there was the salt sea, the valley of salt, but they got salt from the ground a lot of times that would run in a vein where God had already mixed and put together sodium and chlorine to make salt. So they would go and they would take it and chip it off where they would get some salt that way. Well, if they chipped that salt off, they could use that salt and it was good, but if it, if it got the sun on it or if it got rain on it, once it was taken from the vein, that salt lost its savor. The salt would lose its savor. And there was no good for that salt. Then what they had to do in Israel is they would take the salt out and they would throw it on the ground to be trodden underfoot was only good for people to walk on. It was no longer good for the salting anymore. There were some good uses of salt too back in that time. I think good uses for salt in our time. Salt would help prevent animals from decaying. If you had killed an animal, 
and you wanted to keep the meat, we could store the meat in salt. If you put it in salt, who's read the uh, stories? I think the stories of, uh, um, yeah, the Little House on the Prairie stories. We read them when the girls were growing up. We read, read through all those books and stuff. And I think one of them talks about them keeping meat out cutting in a shed or whatever it would be where they kept it in wrapped in the, the salt. It preserved it. So they then could go out, cut a piece off, bring it in and cook it wherever they were going to, but it, it preserved the, the meat. Also, it preserved vegetables. When you can a little bit, I know Shelly's done a little canning. Oftentimes when you can, do you put salt in it? Helps to preserve it. Well, they use salt back in that time to help preserve their vegetables. Did they in biblical times, did they have refrigerators like we have today? They did not, did they? They used salt to be able to help preserve things. Also, salt would help promote digestion and it would prevent them from getting different deadly diseases. I think uh, in our day, we can get too much salt, can't we? It causes high blood pressure, causes other things in our life too if we get too much salt. But if you don't have salt, you could lack salt too, couldn't you? We've got to have enough salt to help keep us going. Who knows what they, what they put in salt to help us from getting some other disease? What shall? Iodine. What does iodine prevent us from getting? You boys know? Kyler, do you know? Kyler doesn't know either. Caleb, do you know? Huh? Goiter. Yeah, goiter would be one of the things that prevents us from getting. They put a little iodine in the salt today to prevent people from getting goiter. Has anybody seen anybody that's had goiter? I have. Yeah, there's a little girl down the street from where I was growing up. Uh, she walked around and she had a swelling and stuff here. And I had asked, what was it? That's what it was. It was goiter. She ended up having goiter. So there's many uses for salt. And I think one of the greatest uses of salt in that time and in our time is just to make food taste better. Who likes to put salt on food? Pepper? Little pepper? Yeah. I was, uh, I don't remember exactly. It was, it, on a Thursday night, it was my turn to cook one of the meals that we had at our house. And I, I want to say it was probably spaghetti or it might have had, had to do with some beans or something like that. Something that was out of a can and real easy. And I, and I put a little bit of extra tomato sauce and those types of things. Well, when everybody got to the house, I can't remember if Lee said it, but some of the other guys said, well, it's, it tastes kind of um, like maybe you put, do you remember what they were saying? Kind of like you put uh, something sweet in it, like um, sugar or brown sugar, or something like that. It's like, I didn't put any of that in it. Well, you know what they were grabbing and putting on what I cooked? Salt. They were going to make it taste better so it wasn't as sweet as it was. They were going to put salt on it. Well, we use salt, don't we? All the time on everything. Well, they did too. Salt to make things taste a little bit better. But what is this salt between that we're talking about here? Well, just like chlorine and sodium mixed together make salt, so in our Christian character, it takes the fruit of the Spirit and it takes the 13 works that we looked at in our book here. Our works that we're doing, those 13 things that we looked at that are important, the gold, silver, and precious stones work that's going to make all the difference when we're at the judgment seat of Christ and we see Him face to face are those works. Now we're not talking about those works that will be burned up, right? The wood, hay, and the stubble, but the gold, the silver, and precious stones. And I do hope that you're memorizing those things from here because they're important. But we 
learned those. We had some teaching on all those things, several lessons on it. Last week, we looked at the 11 fruits of the Spirit. And then this week, I'm reading this passage right here, the salt between. You see, it takes both of them together to make the Christian character that God wants us to have. If you want to teach our kids, we want to teach ourselves, our kids, Christian character, it's the fruit of the Spirit. And it's the gold, silver, and precious stones. You can't take one without the other. If we took the one, let's just take the chlorine gas. It's a deadly poison, isn't it? Alone not mixed with the sodium. Well, the same would be our faith without works is what? Who knows? What is it? I heard it. Say it louder. Hay, wood, or straw. Hay, wood, or straw. Dead. It's dead. It'll be burned up, won't it? Faith without works is dead. And that side of faith Coming into faith, knowing the Lord. We have the Holy Spirit. And we've had the fruit of the Spirit that we can take hold of. But the other side of it is the metal sodium. Metal sodium alone is destitute of the saving quality of salt. Destitute of it. So, works without faith, or for not, right? If you have works without the faith side, without the fruit of the Spirit, it's nothing. Who knows people that are trying to do good deeds and work themselves to heaven? The works without faith, without the fruit of the Spirit, is not going to get you anywhere. It's got to be mixed with the fruit of the Spirit. You've got to have the combining to get the salts. The brother that I, or the fellow that I talked about that had passed away here on Friday, he was a man that was all about good works. He brought cookies to us he brought cookies to the police department. He gave cookies to the nurses at the hospital. He went all around this town doing good works. But destitute of saving faith. Works without that is nothing. But when we join the two together and they unite together, they're efficient Christian character. That's what we should be about. The fruit of the Spirit and the works. Israel. Go back to Israel for just a moment. They had the old corn. It was there for their taking. But the next year they were going to have to plow the ground and they were going to have to plant the seeds. They were going to have to work out their salvation. Weren't they? They both come together. Faith and works. Now we look at the, the salt. If you have one without the other, we don't have the salt of Matthew 5.13. But both together, we have the seasoning salt. So let me ask you. I was confronted with it yesterday. When... Things got busy in Billings. And there were people everywhere. And Shelly and I were on our way out to load up our car. Anger and frustration swelled up within me. And what I dumped out there certainly wasn't salt that God wanted me to dump out there to savor everybody around me. But if there was anybody that was a ways back, that just sat there and watched Shelly and I just for a short time at the car there, 
they don't want they would have said maybe we need to go help those two you know maybe we need to come up there and you know I, I think they need the love of the lord you know i think they need the gentleness of the lord I don't think those two have the joy of the Lord right now. I think they need the joy of the Lord. Don't they? You know, I, as I look deep, I don't even think they have the gentleness of the Lord. They need the gentleness of the Lord. The long-suffering of the Lord. Slow to anger like we looked at our Lord this morning. Our God is slow to anger, isn't He? Long-suffering. Not willing that any would perish. I wasn't long-suffering. Righteousness, goodness, willing to go the extra mile, that goodness, meekness, temperate, self-controlled, truth. There probably was truth there still. But as I look at every one of those pieces of fruit, I didn't see me sprinkling any of those fruits. That's what God wanted me to do. He wanted me and Shelly, while we were working together there, for somebody to be standing at a distance from us saying, those two have something that I ain't got. Look at the love that they have. Look at the joy that they have. Look at that gentleness as they deal with each other. Look at the temperance. Look at that self-control. Look, they're long-suffering. Oh, they're meek and lowly. I want what they got. That isn't what they got yesterday. But that's what God wants us to do. Everywhere you and I go, when people are around us, you see, this is supernatural. That was my flesh. God was there saying, I can help you have it. I'll give it to you. You know, Shelly and I come back into Costco and we resorted to my taking her out again for the $3 meal. That was, a, that was only Shelly's doing because she said, I've got a cold and I can't taste it anyway, hon. We can have a hot dog with onion on it because I can't taste it anyway. So we got to sit down there and and eat, and we're sitting there looking at each other. I got the drinks, and she got our uh, hot dogs kind of all prepared. And we're sitting across each other, and we're looking at each other. We're not saying a whole lot. And, Shell, are you going to pray? No, I'm not going to pray. You, you pray. <laughs> you, you know, we're, we're brought to that point where I don't think any of our heart is right to pray. Well, I was, I'm convicted. It's time for us. We've got to pray. We've got to make our heart right with the Lord. Not only was the fruit of the Spirit, that supernatural ability that God gives us to have that joy in all those 11 things, was absent. But you know what the first part of the gold is that we looked at, the gold, silver, and precious stone, is how we treat others. How was I treating my wife? I wasn't treating her like the Lord wanted me to treat her. I'm going to mention a few of the other works, the gold, the silver, in the precious stones, just to remind you. One of them is how we treat others. How we exercise authority over others. Or how we submit to others. How we employ our God-given gifts. How we share our resources. How we suffer for Jesus. How we run the race. That race was bad yesterday for me. How we spend our time. How effective, 
how effectively we control the old nature. Oh, the old nature was coming out yesterday. I think it even had a few horns on it. It was bad. It came out. The old nature. How many souls we witness to and win to Christ. How we react to trials and temptations. It was a trial, all right. It was a trial. How much we love the doctrine of the rapture. And how faithful we are to the Word of God. And how faithful we are to God's people. It's like the salt was gone yesterday. And I don't know about you, have you had days like that? Or have you been in a period of time where the salt's truly been absent? See, what God showed me again was the fruit of the Spirit and these 13 works of the gold, silver, and precious stones together make our Christian character. And when we have that Christian character combined, we have the salt that God's talking about here to savor the earth. And as he says, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has, has, have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. My actions yesterday was not salt. There was no savor, but it was to be walked over by men. There was no eternal value in my actions yesterday. How was your yesterday? How was your today? Have you been the, the salt shaker to those that were around? That's what God wants us to be. The salt shaker. In this community, in the community beyond, wherever you are, God wants us to be the salt. I wish I could go back to yesterday, back to the future. Wish I could go back to yesterday. Before the anger and the frustration gripped my spirit and took over. Because I know there was somebody somewhere yesterday watching. I didn't see him. You know why I didn't see him? Because I had tunnel vision. I had tunnel vision the way I felt. And that tunnel vision was on my wife. And I couldn't see anything outside that. But I'm thankful that the Lord forgives. And he asks a question here. He, he kind of he says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Remember that for Israel, the vein of salt was in the earth. But once you broke that salt off and it was exposed to the sun in the rain, it lost its savor. But if you've lost your savor, if you've lost that salt that we ought to be for the Lord, 
All we've got to do is get right on the rock again. Get right back into the vein again. That's the amazing thing with our God, isn't it? He always welcomes us back. See, what I did yesterday, He forgave me. Today's a new day. Today He says, Kevin, you go forth and you be the salt I wanted you to be yesterday. Get back in the vein and do what I want you to do and be about my work. See, I had to think about that. Because not making that right too, how do, we, how do we come when we come and preach the Word of God? We can't be effective, can we? And I want to be effective because God wants me to be effective. And if that would have ruined everything yesterday, if God didn't, wasn't a forgiving God and a long-suffering God and a God that was slow to anger, I couldn't have come back into the vein today. I could rise up this morning and stand upon the rock again. And look at the salt. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit. And the gold, silver, and precious stones together. And I can be God's salt shaker today. And that's what He wants us to be. Every one of us can be the salt shaker for Jesus. But if you lost your savor, get right back into the vein. And let's move forward together. Today. Oh, what a great God. What a great Savior we have, don't we? That we can be back in the fight with Him again. Right back strong in the Lord. I want to give, I want, I want you to see where you're at. Are you the salt shaker? Are you the chlorine? Or are you just the sodium? God's calling you to the place where He unites both of them and He makes the salt for the earth. Where are you at? Are you on one side or the other side? Where He can bring you together? Have you, have you been there for a while and you've gone away and there is no savor? Come back to the savor. Come back to where God's calling us this morning. I want Him to deal in each one of our hearts. If He's dealing with your heart, where you are. I'll give God opportunity to work in your hearts, opportunity for you to pray, opportunity for you to do what I had to do this morning. And that's truly come back to the vein where my salt shaker can be full starting out this day. Come to where He wants you to be this morning. Don't stay where you are. Come, He says. Come right there. Make that union this morning. Let each one of you have opportunity to pray. Where you are. I don't know where you are. The Lord knows. You see, there may have been other people looking at me yesterday. But I know my Lord was always looking at me. And He saw. And He forgave. And He forgives you. And He brings you right back in that place where you need to be. Let Him deal with your heart right now. Let Him move in your life where He wants to move. And do those necessary things for Him. Father, we, we thank You, Lord, for Your forgiveness. 
Lord, I, th I thank you that you make it available for us to have the fruit of your Spirit. And Lord, you also make it available for us to do the gold, silver, and precious stones work, Lord, this side of glory. And Lord, how you bring both of those together in our Christian character. And from that, you fill our salt shakers full. And from there, Lord, you want us to go forth in this world leaving your pieces of salt, Lord, everywhere we go, how we treat others, how we endure temptation and trials, your love, your joy, your peace, your long-suffering, your gentleness, all those things, Lord. Help us to leave little pieces of it everywhere we go. And as we salt, Lord, People see us different and want to come to you. And that you give us opportunity, Lord, to share the hope that we have in you. To bring them to the vein. To bring them to the solid rock on which we stand. Jesus, I bring before you a couple of these families again that are hurting. I pray for Pat Edgar today. Lord, losing her husband here Friday. Lord, I would just ask you encourage her heart. Help her through this time, Lord, of mourning and help us to be available for her in any way that we can. Lord, and Barry and Tanya, Lord, I just ask that you be with them and provide the comfort in this trying time for them losing their boy that only you can bring, Lord. Help us to be available, Lord, for them. And as opportunity would arise with each one of these families, Lord, and others beyond. Let us leave that pleasing savor of our Lord Jesus Christ lingering once we've been around. Lord, I just ask that you be with us in the remainder of our day. Bring us back here, Lord, tonight to your word again, Lord. We started this morning with looking at tasting of your word, Lord, and how sweet it is. Oh, Lord, let us taste that again, Lord, and again and again, and never lose the desire for it. Be with Harlan where he is, Lord, with his pneumonia. Harlow, Lord, where he is. Jeff and Tina, Lord, I pray that you undertake with them as well, Lord. I know last Sunday they watched us live stream, Lord. Be with them, Lord. Guide them. Lord, we love them. Father, others that we are reaching out to, Amber and Errol, Lord Chad and Julie and Mike and Sarah. Lord, many families that you're bringing to us that we're able to work with Paul and Megan. Lord, help us to influence their lives for you. And Father, we end our morning service here in Jesus' name. Amen.